Hey everybody, in this video we're going to solve the radical equation you see in front of you. Some of you might be like, what? I don't see a radical. Why are you lying? Radicals and rational exponents are really the same thing. You might see this under the category or the topic of solving equations with rational exponents. It's the same, right? How do we break that down for one example? A square root of x, that's the same as x to the 1 half power. Another way to look at it is call the root a p root. That means whatever the root is, it's represented by a p. x to the q power, and then that equals x to the q over p. And let me get that out of the way a little, sorry. So I use these letters on purpose. Not only are they neighbors to one another in the alphabet, but they are also um, the first letter of my little analogy here. So queen, upper class, peasant, lower class. Peasant's got to live outside, and the queen gets to live in the castle. So that helps you remember. Go for it. In a square root, there's an invisible 2, and x always has an invisible 1 as the power. So that means this thing, and you don't have to do anything with this. I'm just showing you that 3 minus x to the 4 thirds power, if I wanted to write it in radical form, 4 upper class lives in the castle, 3 lower class lives in the index. So it's the, really the cube root of 3 minus x to the fourth power. All right. Um, other thing, power of a power, x to the second to the third. What's the rule? Power of a power, that equals x to the sixth. You multiply your exponents. So that's the rule there. What's another rule? Um, a over B times B over A equals 1. That is the reciprocal of that. So when you multiply something by the reciprocal, you get 1. Um, what else do we need to know? When you take an even root of both sides of an equation yourself, when you do this, you need to put plus minus in front. If that even exponent or uh, even root was already on the problem, you just roll with it, you do what you do. Now, this being said, since even is the peasant, when you raise both sides yourself to a power with an even denominator, that's the same thing, you need plus minus on that step. That all being said, it's everything we need to know. Let's go ahead and solve this problem. <sighs> Guys, first thing you need to do is isolate the radical. Where's the radical, you may say? The radical is from here to there. So what does that mean? You have to get that 4 out of there before you start busting out the moves with the reciprocal. Okay? If you find yourself feeling weird about it at a certain point, it's probably because you didn't divide by the coefficient. So let's go. First thing we're going to do, add 5 to both sides. Next, 4 times the quantity of 3 minus x to the 4 third power equals 64. Next, divide by 4. 3 minus x to the 4 third power, leave yourself some space, equals... Dividing by 4 is the same as dividing something in half twice. Half of 64, it's kind of easy to cut in half. That's 32. Half of 32, I hope we all know it by heart. If not, you can do half of 30, half of 2. So it's 15 and 1. So it's 16. All right. Next step, let's bust out some markers. We're going to raise both sides to what power? We're going to raise both sides to the reciprocal power. We have 4 thirds. What's the reciprocal of 4 thirds? That's the power we want to use. That would be 3 fourths. Hopefully you see all the stuff I prepped you with coming into play. Power of a power. What do you do with the exponents? You multiply them. What happens when you multiply reciprocals? You get 1. Anything to the 1 power, 1 power, do you have to write the 1? No. So what's left on the left is 3 minus x equals, 
Here is where we do what I like to call our swap opportunity. You look for the smallest number you could think of that when you raise it to a power, you get that number, and that will be two to the fourth, not four to the second. It gets messy if you try that. Then again, power of a power, four is really over one. Four, we don't have reciprocals, but the fours can divide out. You're left with three over one or three, which is two to the third. Now, when you take the even root of both sides or raise both sides to a power with an even denominator, which is the same thing, when you do that, you need to put what out front? Hmm? Plus, minus. Here, not at the end end, now. There we are. Then, from here, I'm really running out of room, huh? Um, okay, I just did that to draw a little boundary. So I have three minus x equals plus minus eight. I'm gonna split that up into two equations. Three minus x is eight. Three minus x equals negative eight. Minus three on both sides. Negative x equals five. Divide by a negative, x equals negative five. Am I on the screen? Uh, barely. All right, and then here, negative x equals, uh, don't mess that up, negative 11, divide by a negative, x equals 11. Two answers right here. If you go back and check it, you're gonna be good, but negative five, three minus negative five is three, plus five, three plus five is eight, Eight is also known as two to the third. The threes cross out, you'll have a two to the fourth. Two to the fourth is 16 times four is 64, minus five is 59. That works, and then 11 will work the same way because three minus 11 is negative eight, and then negative eight is negative two to the third. That the, the fourth power becomes positive. Promise, they both work. There you go, you're done. So the final answers are I lost my other markers. I guess I'll circle them in green. X equals negative five and X equals 11. A lot of people are gonna accidentally put like plus minus five or something. Don't be that person. Um, and that's it, I hope you're feeling smarter. Radical equations and rational exponents are all the same umbrella. Um, click through for the next example or find another video that you can benefit from. And uh, thumbs up if you feel good. Thumbs down if you don't. Adios.